One of the cringiest topics that we all see agents post about is FISBO or for sale by owner. It's up there with who produced what, which brokerage is best. I mean, I, I do post those too. And of course, when real estate agents get a hold of and ruin a good meme, I mean, okay, those Bernie memes are fantastic. I'm guilty as charged. But does selling your home FISBO really save you money? The short answer for those that want me to just get to the point is sometimes. I mean, what I mean is the answer is pretty subjective and it's hard to say unless we have more info. That being said, here's what I mean. I love a good Facebook trolling session where I see someone selling a home and then a comment war with an agent ensues, you know, usually including someone saying that they sold their house, FISBO, and saved $45,000 or some ridiculous amount. And you look up their previous property and see that it actually sold for $160,000 and wonder who is that good of an agent to charge 28% commission on a sale. So it got me thinking. You know, there's so much misinformation on both sides of the coin that it's hard to tell which way is up. When it comes to selling your own home, selling it for sale by owner is always a choice. I have sold several homes that were for sale by owner, and I can say that some people really get it and are missing their calling as an agent and should be putting their talents to work for others. And some people, you know, they just simply don't. For the sake of keeping this video focused on saving money, let's stick to pricing. With the lack of reported data and narrow market reach of FISBO homes, how does one really know if indeed you saved money by selling your house for sale by owner? You could sell it at a price and think to yourself, awesome, I just saved X percent by selling on my own. And yet, how do you know you wouldn't have made more by listing your home with a realtor? Around here, and especially in this market, appraisals done by homeowners or for sale by owner companies, I mean, they're rarely worth the paper that they're written on. Experience in the field can tell you what the market value is, which is not the same thing as appraised value. Also, you also can't go off of assessed value as it's not equivalent to appraised value or market value either. Having the right agent can make all the difference in gauging the right price based off of market conditions and loads of data intel. Then there's another factor, cost of holding by a longer sales cycle due to lack of proper marketing. This is what I witness most in the Quad Cities. Let's say seller Sally has a $275,000 home that she is selling FISBO. Let's say that she's off on her pricing and the home's market value is only worth about 260. Sally not knowing when to reduce her price accordingly and furthermore, how to gauge the proper reduction process reduces $12,000 over the course of six months and the price is now 263. Buyer Bob has been watching his home on the, on, has been watching this home on the sideline for about six months and decided now's a good time to offer. He thinks to himself, I'll offer 247 because I don't have an agent, neither does Sally, so I'm going to save the commission off the price of the home. Buyer Bob has no care in the world that seller Sally reduced her price by 12,000. He just smells desperation due to how long she's been trying to sell it. Seller Sally knows her house has been on the market for six months and decides to take the offer because, well, at least I'm not paying a commission. She closes 45 days later and brags all over Facebook about saving almost $15,000 by selling it myself, or heck, she might embellish and say $45,000. But did she really? I mean, five years back, Sally had bought her home for about $230,000 at 4.5% interest. Her payment with escrow and PMI is just over $1,800. She's cuffed up her home really well, and it's appreciated. The market is hot, and Agent Aaron knows he can get $260,000 for Sally's house all day long. Sally isn't impressed with Aaron's assessment and decides, I'm going to put my home up for sale by owner for two seventy five dollars and not work with any agents. And well, we know the rest of the story. So let's break this down. If Aaron offered to list Sally's property and sells it at two sixty dollars at let's say 6%, then Sally would be sitting at $244,400 minus attorney, abstract, title fees, tax pro rate, etc. But Aaron could have sold it in a week or less and close in 40 days. But Sally chose to do it all alone and save the commission and finally had a closing date seven and a half months after putting the house for sale by owner. Knowing that there is six months difference in potential sales time, take six times her mortgage and uh, mortgage payment of 1800 bucks equals 10,800, most of which went towards interest and barely affected the payoff balance. So she really received $236,200 minus attorney abstract title fees, tax pro rate, et cetera. So Sally's perception is that she saved herself almost $15,000, but in reality, she really cost herself $8,200 in six months of wasted time. But she saved the commission, right? This is exactly what I mean by it depends. I have some colleagues that really know their stuff and lots of times will sell FISBO. 
if they know their buyer already. In those cases, yes, they truly did save money selling them their house for sale by owner. But if they need to market their home because they don't have a buyer in mind already, they hire me as their agent to save them time and money because they understand the above scenario all too well from past experiences. In conclusion, if you're considering selling your home, you might consider hiring a professional to get the job done and save yourself time, headache, money. If you decide to sell it on your own, just understand that the decision to do so does not always result in saving money. I'm reminded of two posts that recently came across my newsfeed. One said, you get paid for your value, not your time. The other explained the concept of perceived value in the best way I've seen it in a long time. It went something like this. A customer asked a contractor friend of mine how much it would cost to do this project. My friend gave him a response, $4,500. The customer responded, that seems really high. My friend asked, what do you think is a reasonable price for this job? The customer answered, 2,500 max. My friend responded, okay, then I invite you to do it yourself. The customer answered, I don't know how. My friend responded, all right, then how about for $2,500, I'll teach you how to do it. So besides saving you 2,000, you'll learn valuable skills that will benefit you in the future. The customer answered, sounds good, let's do it. My friend responded, great, to get started, you're going to need some tools. You will need a chop saw, table saw, cordless drill, bit set, router, skill saw, jigsaw, tool belt, hammer, you know, all those things. Customer answered, but I don't have any of those things and uh, I can't justify buying all those tools for just one job. So my friend responded, okay, well then for an additional $300, I can rent my tools to you just for this project. Customer answered, okay, that sounds fair. My friend responded, great, we'll start the project on Monday. The customer answered, well, I work Monday through Friday, I'm only available on the weekends. So my friend responded, if you wanna learn from, from me, then you'll need to work when I work. The project will take three days, so you'll need to take three days off work. Customer answered, that means I'm going to have to sacrifice my pay for three days or use my vacation time. So my friend responded, well, that's true, but remember, when you do a job yourself, you need to account for unproductive factors. The customer answered, well, what do you mean by that? So my friend responded, doing a job completely from start to finish includes time spent to plan the project, pick up materials, travel time, gas, setup time, cleanup time, waste disposal, amongst other things. That's all in addition to the actual project itself. And speaking of materials, that's where we will need to start on Monday. So I need you to meet me at the lumber yard at say 6 a.m. The customer answered at 6 a.m. My workday doesn't usually start until 8 a.m. My friend responded, well then, you're in luck. My plan is to start on the deck, building it by 8 a.m. But to do so, we'll have to start at 6 a.m. to get materials picked up, loaded, and delivered to your job site. The customer answered, you know, I'm realizing that a lot more goes into a job than what a customer sees in the finished project. Your proposal of $4,500 is very reasonable. I'd like to just have you handle the project. In conclusion, when you're paying for a job, whether it's a physical project or let's say marketing or hiring an agent, you pay not only for the material and the work to be completed, you're also paying for knowledge, experience, custom skills, tools, time to plan, time to prepare, professionalism, work ethic, excellence, discipline, commitment, integrity, taxes, licenses, sacrifices, liabilities, insurance. If you request a proposal for custom work to be done, please don't disrespect the service provider by trying to get them to lower their price. If their proposal exceeds your budget, there's nothing wrong with getting another opinion or another proposal. Just remember, you get what you pay for. And service providers, know your worth and be confident in it. Consumers, recognize their worth and be respectful of it. On that note, happy house selling.